Hello, I'm Halili Knox with SFGov TV. Along with the League of Women Voters of San Francisco, I'm here to discuss Proposition A, a ballot measure that will be before the voters on Tuesday, November 4th. Proposition A is an ordinance that would allow the city to borrow up to $500 million by issuing general obligation bonds. The city would use this money to implement many of the infrastructure repairs and improvements identified by the Transportation Task Force. The city could use the funds for the following purposes. Construct transit-only lanes and separated bikeways. Install new boarding islands, accessible platforms, and escalators at Muni and BART stops. Install new traffic signals, pedestrian countdown signals, and audible pedestrian signals. Install sidewalk curb bulb outs, raised crosswalks, median islands and bicycle parking, and upgrade Muni maintenance facilities. Any proposed use of these bond funds would be subject to review and further changes by the mayor and the board. Proposition A would allow an increase in the property tax to pay for the bonds if needed. It would permit landlords to pass through up to 50% of any resulting property tax increase to tenants. Proposition A also would require the Citizens General Obligation Bond Oversight Committee to review the spending of bond funds. One-tenth of one percent of the bond funds would pay for the committee's audit and oversight functions. If you vote yes, you want the city to issue $500 million in general obligation bonds on infrastructure projects designed to improve Muni reliability and accessibility, improve the conditions of streets, and make roads safer for pedestrians, cyclists, and motorists. If you vote no, you do not want the city to issue these bonds. I'm here with Cheryl Brinkman, San Francisco MTA Board of Directors Vice Chair, but here as a private citizen and proponent of Proposition A. We're also joined by Judge Quentin L. Kopp, Chairman of the State Senate Transportation Committee from 1987 to 1998, and member of the Board of Supervisors from 1972 to 1986, and an opponent of the measure. Thank you both for being here. We'll start with some opening comments, beginning with you, Ms. Brinkman. Thank you. This bond measure is really about the efficiency and safety of our transportation system in San Francisco and the efficiency and safety of our streets. If you use the streets in San Francisco by any mode, whether it's by private automobile, whether it's by bus, whether it's on foot or by bicycle, you care about this bond measure passing because this is going to help all modes use the streets in a more efficient way. We're going to be able to move more people and we're going to reduce congestion and increase safety. Um, San Francisco has not passed a transportation-related bond measure in over 60 years. All of, uh, all of the work that was done by previous generations to pass bond measures has given us the system that we have today. People will be quick to say it's not a very good system. It is the system that we can create with the resources that we have. In order to continue to improve this system, we're going to need to reinvest into it. We're going to need to make the investment now to show future generations that we cared about their future and their future transportation as much as previous generations cared about ours. Thank you. Judge Kopp, your opening remarks. Proposition A is as simple as ABC except this time the ABC stands for A blank check. What they don't tell you is this is a borrowing. A general obligation bond is a borrowing of money, a half a billion dollars, repayable over 30 years, at interest which will bring it to over a billion dollars, 100 million. One billion, 100 million. It contains no define specific projects. It's written in glittering generalities. It allows spending it on anything mentioned or perhaps unmentioned in the measure itself. It isn't probably going to pass because it takes a two-thirds approval. And I doubt San Franciscans, including runners, want to approve a billion dollars in debt. Thank you. Ms. Brinkman, if this passes, what changes will we see in Muni services? We're going to see changes similar to some of the pilot projects we've done under the Transportation Effectiveness Project. Uh, people who ride the 5 and the 5L have seen changes on that line that's increased efficiency and actually brought us increased ridership. We're carrying more people on that bus line because of the changes that we've done. 
The 14 mission bus has seen transit priority signals, which is something that this bond money will be spent on. It has saved the 14 mission bus and the 14 limited about five or four minutes in that stretch. So passengers on that ride are having a, a faster trip up and down Mission Street. Um, we're going to see pedestrian bulb outs. We're going to see safer streets for people getting to and from transit, people riding on bikes, people walking on foot. We are going to see our buses able to move faster through the streets, which is going to allow us to carry more people. It will be as if we've added buses, because the buses will take a shorter amount of time to do their run. So they will be able to pick up more people and take more, uh, more runs during that time. So we're going to see a lot of really positive changes. Judge Cobb, how do you respond? You can't put a finger on any one of those wonderful uh, descriptions. On page 199 of the proposition, it states specifically that this does not, and I'm quote, involve any commitment to specific projects to be constructed with bond proceeds. And they also use that to say, therefore, it doesn't need an environmental impact report or environmental review of any kind. It includes money, though, for the Caltrain system. Do you know what the Caltrain system is? 88% of the riders are from Woodside, Atherton, Palo Alto, Portola Valley, San Mateo, and Santa Clara counties. Not San Franciscans, but they could take this money and spend as much as they want for people in the suburbs who aren't obligated to pay it back. It is probably illegal under the California government code. It uses the word money may be spent. It doesn't say shall. And it does not define even what the money may be spent on. How will use of these funds impact levels of traffic congestion? I think they're going to impact them positively in that we're going to see less traffic congestion. Um, anytime somebody chooses to take a bus or walk or bike, instead of taking their private car, is a win for everybody on the streets, no matter what mode you're using. But in order for people to make that decision and leave their private automobile at home, we have to make the alternate modes uh, welcoming and safe and efficient. We've seen that, again, to go back to some of the projects we've done under the Transit Effectiveness Project, we've increased ridership on bus lines. People are switching modes. Um, car driving in San Francisco is actually a declining mode share. Any time that we can make it easier not to drive, that we can make the streets more welcoming for everybody, again, it is a win for all of us. Uh, it helps with uh, air pollution. It helps with congestion. It helps with uh, children's activity levels. Having the streets safe enough that kids feel they can actually walk and bike in their neighborhood, that parents feel comfortable taking their kids to school on the bus or walking to school or taking the bike to school. We are going to see positive um, positive results from this. As we provide transit-only lanes, as we make them clear, as we've done on the 38 Geary, as we've done on Market Street, the buses move more quickly in those red transit lanes. Again, that's a win for tens of thousands of riders every day. Judge Cobb, how do you respond? Oh, again, that's just a, a wish list. The Ballot Simplification Committee uh, which analyzes every ballot measure and tells voters what's in it says this, any proposed use of these bond funds would be subject to review and further changes by the mayor and the board. You can't even believe this document because the mayor and the board of supervisors, if it ever passed, could change these generalities uh, which are in here. Every general obligation bond we have voted on in San Francisco, the earthquake safety bond a couple of years ago in 2011, the uh, school bonds defined, identified the schools that the money would be spent on. When we established BART in 1962, a $792 million general obligation bond issue for BART when we approved the California High Speed Rail Authority in 2008. It was for high speed rail in California. This is a conglomeration of words, meaning they're going to put money into MTA's pockets to spend as they want to spend. Just like 
they're doing with the Central Subway, which went from an estimate in 2003 of $647 million to 2012, $1,600,000,000. Let's take some final remarks. We'll start with you, Judge. This is borrowing of a gigantic proportion, which will affect not just property owners, but also renters. In Proposition A is a specific provision that allows a pass-through to renters of 50% of the billion, $1 million cost over a period of 30 years. And don't let them fool you by saying, oh, we won't sell a bond until we pay off a bond in a comparable amount. It isn't in Proposition A. They'll say, well, it's policy. If it's policy, why did the controller go to all of the specific details to tell voters how much this is going to cost them? So if you're a tenant, don't think you're getting a free ride. You're not if this ever passes. It should be rejected, vote no on Proposition A, and get specific projects. Thank you. Final remarks from you, Ms. Brinkman. Yes, I just want to remind everybody, this really is about the future of San Francisco. This is about how we're going to use our streets in the future. This is about investing in future transportation for our citizens. Um, the bond oversight committees do their work in San Francisco. City policy does state that the property taxes are not going to be going up because bonds, as with all the other bonds we've passed recently, Laguna Honda, Park and Rec, SF General Hospital, all of these bonds had the same type of oversight, the same type of structure. So I really look forward to the citizens of San Francisco showing that they have this commitment to the future of the city. The city is going to continue to change. We need to change our transportation system with the city. Thank you both for your time and your comments. We hope that this discussion has been informative. For more information on this and other ballot measures in this year's election, please visit the San Francisco Elections website at sfelection.org. Remember, early voting is available at City Hall Monday through Friday from 8 to 5. You can also vote at City Hall on the two weekends before Election Day. And if you don't vote early, be sure to vote on Tuesday, November 4th.